was so tiny, an ordinary microscope couldn't see it, but it had the power to destroy us. It was turning neighbor against neighbor. It spread rumors. It spread fear. How do you get AIDS? Is it witchcraft? Don't go near them. Don't drink from their glass. Maheshwari of Chennai, India, was thrown out of her family home, forced to live on the porch, like an animal. No one would touch her. Millions of stories like hers were circling the globe. It's a punishment from God. They brought it on themselves. They deserve to die. Even Christians said these things. By the late 1990s, World Vision staff in Africa had seen the effect of HIV and AIDS for decades. Staff did what they could on a small scale, but the suffering was overwhelming. When you hear the crying, and you knew if it was a dad who died first, six months down the road, the mother would die, and the kids would come back and cry again. There, there was a pain. in their eyes that no single child should ever have to bear at such an early age. Rich Stearns was the brand new president of World Vision United States in 1998, when he traveled to Uganda and met three brothers orphaned by AIDS, left totally alone in the world. protection and safety would be around them. I remember this feeling inside of me saying, how could this be happening? On the scale it was happening in Africa, uh, 13 million orphans at that time. And I found myself getting angry. Why is no one doing anything about this? We were eyewitnesses to this. And yet, this wasn't being discussed in our strategy meetings, in our, in our ministry meetings. World Vision wasn't doing very much about HIV and AIDS. Well, I really remember you know, some of those first meetings with the marketing team when I announced that I think we needed to raise money for HIV and AIDS. And uh, the silence was deafening. Finally, one brave soul said, Rich, uh, you have to understand something. HIV and AIDS is an R-rated issue. Christians in America are not interested in this issue. Not only are they not interested, they're hostile toward this issue. And I said, uh, well, our donors are wrong then, and we're going to take this issue to the church, and we're going to take this issue to our donors, and we're going to convince them that it's the right thing to do. Because if we're silent about this crisis, uh, if we remain silent, uh, God help us uh, for turning the other way. In 2000, the top leadership of World Vision realized AIDS was spinning out of control and threatening to undo decades of development work. Our president, Dean Hirsch at the time, put Ken Casey as a special representative to the president, showing how much the organization was committed to HIV and AIDS. And then Professor Wilfred Millay was our Africa vice president, and he was very passionate um, about what he saw happening in Africa in terms of just the, the number of people that were dying and the number of orphans. World Vision launched the HOPE initiative. We, as a child-focused organization, were mostly concerned about what was the effect of this pandemic on children. And, and we basically had a very simple strategy that was built around prevention, care for children, and advocacy. In a relatively short period of time, we needed to mobilize as an organization to respond to something that was having global impact across the world. The challenge was to not only rally donors, but also ramp up work in villages and communities on a global scale World Vision had never attempted before. One of the first places where the HOPE initiative went to work was Kosangombe, Uganda. If there was a place that defined life without hope, it was Kosangombe, devastated by war and then AIDS. The children were really in pain because most of them had lost their parents. When World Vision came here, World Vision educated them, sensitized them of the, on the needs for them to come together and look at their own needs. So through those trainings, people started to see that even themselves, they can do something for their neighbors. We have ABC. One effort was prevention. Even the young were involved. No Children like Winifred learned how to warn friends about AIDS. 
And what is HIV? HIV Clap for her. Very good. Okay, the community care coalition is another way that the community has been mobilized to respond. The community care coalition sent home visitors to care for the sick and watch over orphaned and vulnerable children. Volunteers like Betty gave guidance, counseling, and hope. World Visions taught us how to love one another. Churches have been mobilized, and there are teams that have been formed in different congregations, and those teams are responding to the HIV and AIDS in their congregations. Pastor Joseph Sanyonge, who once preached judgment, now preaches compassion. With the trainings, with the capacity building, with the sensitization, the community, including the church, the church leaders, now look at HIV AIDS as a disease that has come to this community and it is like any other disease. They are no longer condemning the people who are infected. World Vision has done a great, great, great work in this community, <laughs> especially in the lives of the children. The work of the HOPE initiative expanded worldwide. In the Dominican Republic, Rafaela saw her son and daughter die from AIDS-related diseases, but she's gone on to inspire others, visiting families and starting a support group that grew to 100 members. World Vision now helps their weekly meetings. Hers is one of the hundreds of thousands of stories of hope now heard around the world. It was so amazing to watch how Community Care Coalition spread. How is this evening? As a result of the HOPE initiative, we have about 1,200,000 children in Africa uh, being cared for by somewhere around 73,000 volunteer caregivers. You know, to see it start from, from a testing phase to go to that sort of scale was, was really incredible. <laughs> you did just have this sense that God was orchestrating things in a, in a wonderful way. There was just a, a coming together of a huge throng of witnesses, so to speak, who were more than witnesses, but who were active participants in, in helping us address this challenge on children. World Vision became one of the leading organizations that helped turn the tide of public opinion, turning citizens into activists. When people heard the truth, they did the right thing. Our embrace of this issue of HIV and AIDS uh, in the last decade really catapulted our organization to a new level of prominence uh, among the global community of NGOs and multilaterals, you know, United Nations, World Food Program. We did become a voice to be listened to. And we came in saying, let's not forget the kids. Let's not forget the orphans that have lost their parents. And let's also engage the community and churches in the response. So we were able to mobilize just a vast um, response to, to HIV. My greatest concern right now about how the globe responds to HIV and AIDS is that we become apathetic. We've still got around 33 million people who are infected with HIV. Uh, we still have millions of children who have lost parents or have parents who are currently ill and dying. The needs of children are going to continue and as a child-focused organization we can't take our eyes off of that. So while initiatives are time-bound um, and may have a beginning and an end, our work will continue until no child is impacted by HIV and AIDS. The Hope Initiative was an initiative, just something short and temporary. But now we have to mainstream this into our work wherever we do it. So we've got a lot of work ahead of us. It's something that we can feel proud of, of what we've done. But we dare not stop. It's not over. We've been called by a master who gave his life. Should we do any less for the list of these?